great souls, they hear Krishna, just like Srila Prabhupada. He had a heart attack. He was very sick in New York, I believe it was. So the devotees just got some doctor. It wasn't like he was a real high-class doctor. I think it was a Sunday or something, and they couldn't find, they somehow got some doctor to come over. And the doctor said to Prabhupada, your problem, Swamiji, is you pray too much. <laughs> now, what, what is the disciples going to think? Brahmananda, Prabhu, you know, he has big fists. He's big everything, but it's <laughs> very, they didn't like this. The doctor's telling Prabhupada, the problem with you, Swamiji, is you pray too much. The devotees were very disturbed with this doctor. Prabhupada said, no, Krishna is speaking through him. Now, he wasn't even a devotee. He wasn't a sage. He was just a totally mundane, sinful person in New York City who said to Prabhupada, you pray too much. You need to walk. Prabhupada said, Krishna is speaking through him. And that's where the whole tradition of morning walks were some of the most precious jewels of knowledge were manifested during those morning walks. And it all came through just a doctor. Prabhupada heard Krishna's voice through him. When His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami was in a debate with some other devotees in Mayapur, Prabhupada completely took side against him. <laughs> Not against him as a person, but he took the side with the grihastas against the sannyasis, who Tamal Krishna Goswami was the leader. He may just made a statement, which is a common statement in America. If everything goes wrong, and you're just willing to give up everything, you say, I might as well go to China, because it's the most far away in those days. Now you can take planes to China. But in those days, China was the most far away, remote part of the universe. So it's just, I might as well just go to China. And Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna is speaking through you. <laughs> you go to China. Prabhupada never talked about anyone going to China before that, that I heard of. And Prabhupada was serious. He said, no, you must go. You have no other service. You go to China. I'm taking everything away. You go to China. And he went. And now there's thousands of people becoming Krishna conscious in China. It's one of the most growing places of our movement in the world. Prabhupada heard Krishna's voice. So in Krishna consciousness, we should be aware that Krishna is a chintya, he is inconceivable. Now someone like Tamal Krishna Maharaj, his whole life was praying and begging to be an instrument of Prabhupada's mercy. Krishna made him speak those words. <laughs> and Prabhupada heard it. Everyone else just took it as an ordinary expression of frustration. But Krishna spoke through him because he was Krishna's puppet. And Prabhupada, because he was the supreme puppet of Krishna, he recognized that voice and took it so seriously. This is Krishna's love for his devotee. And this was the devotee's love for Krishna. So please, devotees may be passing through difficult times, but they may be very, very, very great personalities. Be careful how you deal with them. We don't know who they are. And every advanced senior devotee we have today, some years back, was not a devotee, extern at least visibly, and then the next stage they became new devotees, junior to everyone, but gradually through the process of Krishna consciousness and the mercy of the Guru and Vaishnavas and Krishna, the wealth of their bhakti is, just develops and manifests. When they're new, or when they're young devotees and they're making mistakes, it's easy to just, I'm better than you. But a few years later you may be regretting what you have done, because Krishna sees. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made the process of Krishna consciousness very simple.